but yeah, we are live. Excellent. How are we? Take a pulse. Awesome. No, I, I had that today, and the doctor, they did that just fine. I, I don't need to do it. Okay, where were they checking for a pulse now? <laughs> yeah, they weren't sure if I was alive, so they uh, had to check. Yeah, they they don't take your word for it anymore, apparently. I'm sure it's that whole insurance fraud business. Yeah, they've had too many people come in and say, I'm dead, help! Uh, I was thinking of some good jokes for that, but they're too topical, so I won't bring them up. Oh, go ahead. No, 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 no. No, go ahead, start us off with some laughter. No, I, I'm i dour today. What? What is this I'm word? Mr. Dower, D O U R. D O U R. I yes. don't know that word. Ferb, do you know this word? Yes, I know this word. Oh, God damn it. Why? It's like half my life is, you know, proximity to Dower. I hate you both. <laughs> we Just like the word. Im Im imagine someone who personifies glum. Someone who personifies glum. Glum. Not happy, not excited or bubbly, just really dour, maybe sometimes a bit dry. Um, abrasive, too. Think, think dwarven laborer for a fantasy equivalent. Uh, okay. Okay, well, nice to know. Anyways, um, hi, Shrike. Uh, what have you brought us here today for? Greeting. I have brought you. You know that was actually. Lost uh, him. What? Did he just post no, up? I I had ob. Adjusting. Um. Yeah, I'm just I'm I'm good. Word set. But yes. Um. The other day I was actually looking up an article, and um, came across this one that stated. Well, basically, it was written by this guy who trying to educate his son on video games and trying to do it in a way that counteracted the cultural stigma that most people grew up with video games. Saying, oh, it's for kids, or it's dumb, like that. And I thought that was really interesting, how he recognized that and was really trying to put forth the effort to make sure his son didn't feel the same way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the the problem I have is that I, with the with one exception, I've never really had to deal with any kind of stigma. Same and here. Um, also, I am by my, you know, how I, due to my youth, I'm also kind of immune to uh, social pressure. Played, you're in your mid forties. I am in my late forties, and basically, due to my youth, you know, you're 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 not really capable of embarrassing me or making me feel shame, or I emotionally, I am a rock because it was required to survive. I, I you know, I you. could make you feel shame, but then you'd kill me. It's a good thing I'm separated by the internet because I have tried multiple times and failed. Apparently. Oh yeah, you should stop real quick before he learns where you live. <laughs> nah, I've I've got some videos my mom made of things she forced me to do. So yeah, you. Oh my gosh! Yes, I've seen some of them. I must. Yeah, I... Anyway, um, I'm curious, what sort of community was the father in question a part of? I don't really think he was part of. Oh, you mean gaming community or just where he grew? Not up? gaming community. Uh, what what? area was he in what was what are the people there like it didn't really go into the area he lived just the era and I, th I think it was in the 80s and you know his family basically everybody in his family um including everybody he knew treated it as just this this stupid little thing that kids do and toys yeah basically like toys and I've kind of, I've realized that in my life as well. Uh, not really to that extent, but occasionally. 
And it got to the point to where I started relating video games and adults being enthralled with video games, same as an adult being enthralled with sports or watching sports on a TV. In fact, I think in a lot of ways, a game can be better because you are not just vegetating in front of a television watching one guy kick a ball into a net and the entire stadium getting into an uproar. You're actually using hand-eye coordination. You're using your logic. You're solving puzzles. You're involved, which is some, something that you can say much more than sitting in front of a TV. Uh, definitely. I always enjoy the interactability, and it's 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 kind of like comparing TV to, uh, sorry, it's kind of like comparing watching someone play chess to playing board games yourself. It's it's a different experience. You can't really relate simply watching something go down with being a part of it. But I, how 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 does this come back to the stigma surrounding? Video gaming. Well, personally, I think the stigmas uh, die out a little bit. I mean, you've got that generation who grew up with their children playing video games, and they're starting to get to the point where they're either dying off, don't, don't mean to get grim here, but they're not there anymore, and those who did grow up with gaming are taking over just basic society in my opinion and so they're i the view of the stigma it's kind of nice to see it actually dying down a little Good grandma. Uh -huh. and uh you notice any patterns with uh where the remaining sort of centers of that stigma are no i haven't really thought that deep about it i figured i'd let you ask questions all right. Well, um, my answer is really that a lot of the uh, more rural or uh, old-fashioned cultures tend to uh, they t they tend to have that thought about video games. It's you know it's a country thing. It's a techie thing. It's not uh, doesn't fit the lifestyle of someone who's out in the wilderness without a uh, reliable internet or cable. That's a good point. Herb is a horrible generalist. I don't know what you mean. I generalize everything. Well, I don't know. He actually, he does make a lot of sense there. And that's something I didn't think about. I mean, there is that generally conservative and just country-based low-tech culture that a lot of people, um, a lot of people enjoy. Um, so I, I can see that stigma still kind of surviving in there. Yeah, imagine... You know, you're coming to the city to visit, you know, family, and you're from the country, and you're, you know, kicking balls and hunting, uh, you know, for entertainment, and you come here, and everyone's just sitting in front of a screen for hours on end while you get to watch their brains melt. That's, that's what's going through their minds. At this point, we're just repeating obvious, obvious uh, things. Yeah, but repeating obvious things is how life works. Not really, no. It's not how life works. Hmm. For what were we were talking about during the walk, it seemed like we had some tangents that came off of this. Um, after the main topic, uh, you started going off on your experiences during uh, early gaming, and that led to how our interests differed. Uh, okay, never mind. I remember now. Because it is kind of funny how we do have some, you know, not a whole lot of overlap in our interest, it seems like. Nope. Different people, different games. Actually, looking at it from an outside standpoint, I can, I can really see that. Now, oh, yeah. that, now that you mention it, and I never really put two and two together, that you guys have really just completely different views on certain genres and different likes. Slade it, spends yeah. like hours upon hours in Minecraft just, you know, doing the whole genetic crop farming stuff. And I'm like, that's, 
it's so repetitive. It's just watching numbers go around. What do you, what's mm. there for you? I want explosions. I want, I want fast. I want furious. I want fun. It's Not my ver- something that's just watching numbers. If I wanted to watch numbers go up, I'd play Eve online. Slade it- Verb wants to click the little thing on the screen and watch it explode. The little sheep. Yeah, the little sheep, the little uh, seals, the little warthogs. That's what got me into gaming, and that's how I'm going to game forever. Is is this your way of uh, rebelling against your parents, Ferb? No. No. My parents are pretty all right. It's those darn sheep and seals that need to die. <laughs> yes. I, as far as that whole thing with the crops and Minecraft go, that's that's like my version of Cookie Clicker, all right, or Cow Clicker, or whatever genre. Yes, it's be. yes, I used to play Star Made to vegetate. Well, it all seems right. a lot like you like Slade. You like the the number crunching games and the the stats and all the numbers and things like that because I, I. Mean, I I tend to get serious about my fun. It's not that I necessarily seek it out. It's that once I'm in a game that I enjoy, I tend to put a lot of thought and effort into enjoying it, which often means, you know, getting into the whole optimizations. How can I do this or that better and whatnot? And I tend to come up with my own, not necessarily true, but my own thoughts of, what I want to do in this game that's effective and chase that. Like when I was making stuff in Star Maid, I knew that there was, you know, a way to make things a hundred times more efficient than than what I was doing, but I kind of ignored those and ignored those methods and and went as far as I could to force my method to work. You're like this method doesn't work, but I'm going to make it work. I'm going to make it fit. It's going to work, or I'm going to die. Or everybody else is going to die. And then in my lone universe, it'll work. I think after that, we started, I started again, as he says, go off on a... Tangent. A tangent regarding the types of games I've played and where I've been steady and where I've changed because there has been some phases I've gone through on certain mm-hmm. games. And man, when I was, I was playing Tribes 2 for a long time, and this was back before, uh, what was it? This was back before I got into uh, StarCraft 2, uh, or WarCraft 3, I think. So I was pretty much completely FPS. You know, I had the Halo 2 on the Xbox and even had Mech Assault. That was a shooter. Not the best, but a fun game. And I think what solidified my change from being kind of like FPS kid only was the introduction of Minecraft. I forgot who exactly got me into Minecraft, but it was a couple of people from the Gamer House group. Shrike, I thought it was the one that bought you your copy. <clears throat> oh, heck yeah. Yeah, thank you. Now I remember it was wow. you. Hey, it was wow. Nice. So those five years of my life, I owe to you. It was, hey, it, those five years were worth the seven bucks. Yep. Definitely worth seven bucks. Wow. You know, I, rem- I remember that very day that I actually did that. And it wasn't just for you. It was for, I think it was for like Drake. four people. It was, yeah, I'm like, holy crap, this game is awesome. It has survival aspects. It, it's it's great. I did it. Friends. I think the only survival aspect I remember was trying to uh, form a firefighter train. When uh, someone accidentally caught the entire world on fire. Remember the old classic mode and our old buddy Spin1441 used to flood the entire map by, you know, letting a bucket of water loose? Mm Mm-hmm. Good thing it wasn't lava. Yeah. 
I don't think lava had that effect, did it? Oh, lava did have that effect. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, it's you can definitely tell though the difference. I mean, I you can see from my view that Slade does like those kind of numbers games and in like in Hearts of Iron um just watching him and playing with him I love playing with him but at the same time it can be slow because he is analyzing the crap out of everything methodical which is a very good thing um in certain games yes yes definitely you should see him scramble to try to win at a at a uh, real time strategy. Then. Oh my god! It's I hate that. <laughs> you wanna play some Company of Heroes, sir? Yeah. Actually, I've got that. We should play it sometime. Oh, it's aggravating. Maybe I want to be able to focus on something and not have other areas. Just you know, it's like bounce, bounce, bounce. I hate bouncing. I like. You know, setting something up and then watching it come to fruition. All right, guys, if you want to see Slade suffer in agony, press that like button. Beat the crap out of it. And then if we get enough, then we'll uh, we'll get him to do a uh, Company of Heroes playthrough. Oh, how many is enough? Five? Maybe. <laughs> Actually, also, I wanted to bring up that fact because we have attempted to get each other to cross over on things. Like, Ferb got me to play two games of League of Legends. Oh, God. <laughs> and then I think I got him once or twice to jump into a co-op of the original Neverwinter Nights campaign. Twice. One was not so long ago, and the other was really long ago. Oh, we did it twice? Because I, I, I was thinking of the fact that I got, you know, we went through the tutorial, and then after that we bounced around the, um, some of the initial areas of the city, but it didn't feel, you know, we never got past that. Never got nope, past chapter we, one. We never have. I think I played that for upwards of five minutes, and then, then I just, I'm like, nope. <laughs> I, you know, I, if you want to... Uh, Another experience, uh, top-down adventuring. You uh, have you looked at? Oh, uh, I love oh, top-down adventuring. What is it called? Um, uh, Path of Exile. Yeah, yeah I'm you, playing it. You you got me into that too a little bit, for Ah, uh, you see, me and a couple of friends were planning on doing a run through without Meister there holding our hands. Sorry, not holding our hands, holding us by a leash and dragging us forward. Yeah. <laughs> You know what? That's right. It was Meister that was there, we and love... and the thing and the thing is, you were doing that to me as well. So was I? Well, yeah. I so... I hardly okay. I played through the whole game once back before the whole game was three times as large as it is now. I know, but still, Meister was way ahead of you. You were way ahead of me, and one or both of you would be telling me, "Hey, come here, click this, do this." And I was like, okay, I'm just following directions. I have no idea. All right, isn't that we should of, start a derping around run then. Isn't that kind of uh, personality just funny, though? There, I remember multiple games. This is the bad thing about getting involved in a game with a friend who is extremely involved in the game. You start new, and he starts new with you, but he breezes through everything, and you have no idea what in the world is going on except for the fact you're following him, killing things, and leveling up. I remember when for I got him into that Neverwinter Nights campaign, and I wanted the, him to take the lead point, but it was so aggravating because I know exactly where to go and what to do because I've run through the campaign so many times. I still enjoy the campaign, <laughs> but it's like you know I, I don't want to I don't want to tell Ferb let's not go into that part of the town yet because but you know what we'll just it was it was funny. I I do understand that pain a little bit. Yeah, it's it's like you know you're really excited that you finally got your buddy to try the game out. But you're constantly trying to combat, you know, as you said before, pulling him by a leash and just rushing him through everything. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty dang 
good at you know UI stuff and figuring out how to work a system. So I bet if I hopped into Neverwinter Nights and just took my time, by the time I leave the uh, beginner zone, I'd kind of know the ins and outs and know that I need to make a new character. Uh, huh, huh, huh. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there are clues in the game that tend to tell you where where the natural progression is because you're always given... You know, there's not a. It's not necessarily a linear path in the sense that you have a chapter and you got multiple areas in the chapter, but there is a natural progression in, for the difficulty of the area. You know, you you come in to the first chapter and you're like level three or four, and it's like, yeah, you could try to go to this area, but you know what? You don't want to touch any of the bosses in the area because you're going to get eaten. So there is that. I, you know what I, what almost feels best to me would be to get into something brand new. That way we're all learning, and I think that would be an interesting experience. I we've huh. done that with multiple games, and I have to attest that is the best experience because you both, like you said, everybody, you both, everybody has no clue what's going on and you're learning it as you go and you're both experiencing the joy of learning the game together Whereas... we're experiencing the joy of watching other people make mistakes exactly yeah it's just a shame that uh you know because you, you've got that window of opportunity typically i mean because the thing is we're not looking at the same time at the same games. One of us finds something. Um, I mean, we've had a few times where it's a brand new game. Like, you know, hey, look at that. we got a couple of new MMOs coming up. Fur pointed me at them. I looked at them and said, okay, that's interesting. You know, and we jump in. And for the most part, we're pretty close in keeping up with one another because we do tend to have some playstyle differences that tend to, you know, like, you know, I love crafting. As well as in, in the various farming aspects of some of those games. So on the one hand, that tends to give me something to do when Ferb's offline. But on the other hand, it is, it is progressing my character a little bit. If you could craft the weapons and farm the food for your soldiers in Hearts of Iron, I know that you would do it. Oh, well, I mean, you you got, you know, building, you know, manufacturing, developing development of the land so you can manufacture. Yeah, that's true. It's there. I know. I play. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it, it we need to find a game like that again. Uh, Ferb, do you know of any upcoming games that would be interesting for that? Uh, hmm. Uh, exactly what genres are you looking at? Well, Slade and I, uh, a couple of days ago, were saying something about a, uh, maybe something medieval-ish. All right. Um, hmm. Anything else you can give me? Swords. You know what? <laughs> Any <laughs> genre you can give me. Video well, games. yeah. It could be like a, we could do like a co-op thing of a, either a top-down RPG or a third or first person RPG. Something that that would, is actually programmed to accommodate a cooperative thing like that. I mean, if you remember, we, I mean, we were able to play Neverwinter Nights co-op, although it wasn't really programmed for that. But, you know, something like, oh, shoot, what's some good MMO? Uh, not, not, I mean, an MMO would be nice, too, although, you know, we have some issues with, you know, like, I'm, I'm not going to do another open world. Okay, let me rephrase it. I'm not going to go into Gankville again. I will do a, a open realm versus realm MMO, but I'm not going to go in there where I can, you know, I'm, 
Yeah, we already had that discussion last week. It'd be nice if there was an MMO, a medieval MMO, the style of Planetside 2. Just the size, the scale, um, a full medieval, three armies going at each other. Actually, well, that's, that's was, Camelot I was Unchained. about to say, yeah, isn't there something like that coming out? Like Camelot Unchained. When's that due? Well, I suspect their beta one is probably going to open up sometime, probably. Their documentation is really strongly hinting at something coming up fairly soon. I would tend to think like early fall. For and, full and release? Oh, you said beta one. Beta one, yeah. Their, their release, it'll be late next year very likely you gotta realize it's it's a it's not a big team and it's it's a kickstarted thing so okay well we'll have to keep an eye on it then oh yeah I, i'm keeping an eye on it because like i said i'm i'm signed up for the the beta one when it pops so i shall have to sign up as well as well as the listeners here if you're interested in a <laughs> large scale medieval ish game like that then you know give it a look well, I, I, I tell you what. Let's like I said, it, the the beta one's going to be a, a limited limited in scale and limited in time. So, uh, depending on what the NDA is like, you know, I may give impressions. Um, I may sit there and say, you know, beta one shows promise, but you know what? Let's if, if you're looking for, I okay. I did a lot of betas early on, and it left a really odd... You know, betas used to be marketed, and I think that's really a bad, bad idea. Yes. I because they get that. marketed as like a... Like I remember I was in the beta for D&D Online, and something... I mean... It was very much a marketed beta, like, hey, jump in here now. Uh, I did the mid to late betas for Vanguard, and that was painful. But then again, they had their issues with development, which led to the pain continuing <laughs> into launch. Wonderful. Yeah. If I, you know, I will do a beta simply to just you know i feel like help like i said it's a small team and i'd and i love getting into that kind of a community uh the large scale projects like you know if there was another oh let's shoot i'm trying to think if a triple a is producing an MMO, I actually would probably avoid that beta just because of my expectations on both the community and how they actually handled the beta. Yeah. You know, I, I did not I did not jump into the beta on Arcade. I did not jump into the beta on, on Black Desert simply because I I, I it, it it had burned me out because it's it's not really about the testing. It's it felt more like a marketing thing, and it was a very, it's a very poor marketing tool in my opinion. It's like, hey, jump in this game. It's not ready yet. We're still testing, but come on and jump in anyway. And then you get in there, and the you know the balancing and the bugs, and it's like, yeah, this is not really a good way to market a product. I think the very first. Uh beta like that I ever played was uh, Battlefield Heroes back in like 2007 or 2008. Did, did we just get Whoa, invaded? Hi. Burb cloned himself. What? Uh, Am I? I'm not Canadian. You got real fancy handwriting too this there. Ferb. Clone is, yeah, Ferb, your clone's Canadian. My gosh, must kill it. <laughs> it's hideous. Good luck, I'll just apologize you to death. Oh. Yeah. I right. can't I can't punch that uh, long distance long distance apologies fail anyway um, yes I would not suggest jumping into the betas for uh, an MMO that's being done by a small team 
if you are not prepared to deal with the kind of environment it is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, basically, yeah. it's... Go ahead. And, and the thing is, most of the time, they're usually pretty good about not necessarily marketing it, although I guess technically they still do because it's, it's, it's presented as a bonus if you, you know, kickstart the game or if you, uh, you know, help their development out. I think it's really crucial to i i wish that there was a way for development teams to make sure that they only got people in who are absolutely dedicated to making sure they can help improve the game because it, sorry what i along those lines i will say that you know i've, I've watched i'm watching pantheon and i'm watching camelot unchained i dropped ashes of uh, creation i i never back that one but I, I, I stopped watching it but like the camilla and shane group because of the fact that they've got this like this little standalone simulator project that allows you to build with the materials from the game and they've got people designing buildings and fortresses and towns and whatnot they have actually built up what looks like a pretty decent community that's kind of segregated with their interests to focus on certain things. And they're actually including that in the beta because when they're going to, I read their document when they open up the beta, they're going to have certain parts of the beta that are going to be limited to certain testers who are going to focus on a particular aspect. Ooh, so nice. you're going to have, they have their builders crew and all they're going to do is they're going to be sitting on these, islands of you know access building the cities and the towns and 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 fortifications with the intent that they're going to you know then the developers can go through see what works and actually make that part of when the game gets released here's all these buildings that have already been built and they've been designed by the community and you know there's certain guidelines on the style of building simply because you got three different realms so you're going to have you know three different feels to it and they've got people doing that as part of the test that is really cool and it's really cool too how they're actually making sure not making sure but they're that they're adding some of the structures that the community is building i mean that gives them a, a, a sense of reward for helping to contribute to the test really and also, it probably saves them a little bit of time in developing the asset, the assets themselves. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, hey, they're they're helping build the game for free there. Hey, Shrek, Slade, not you, Bundy. Uh, do you have any opinions on the old style beta access of having people fill out a form? Is that still relevant today? They don't do that anymore. That's that's the funny thing is I remember filling out those forms years ago. Yeah, you know, I I I I remember doing it for Vanguard EQ two, um, D you know D and D online. Do you think that would be worthwhile to add if you're not mark using your beta as a marketing, but rather as a help us find bugs in the game sort of deal? Well, well the, I. The, I, it's like a it's like a resume you have you, there's you you don't have any way of really checking the validity of it, validity of anything on there exactly that's what and i was about to say you don't know if these people actually contributed to the testing of past games or if they actually have these specifications unless you know you run party programs on their computer which you know a lot of people don't like that and you're never going to be able to sit down with each one of these people and conduct an interview. I think one thing cons... I found interesting was when I was looking at the Citadel Forged by Fire uh, beta, they had a form that you filled out for beta access and included were fields for your YouTube channel and number of followers. Oh, that's marketing. Uh... Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're they're not. That's 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 basically wanting, advertising. They're they're wanting to prior, prioritize people who are going to get the word out at that point. Yeah, which is a good thing. That's not exact, not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, if those streamers are going to 
help contribute to the game, that's great. And, you know, at the same time, it helps them save money and maybe use that money towards something else that could help make the game better. Or, you know, you feed their kids a little more than usual. More ramen. Yes, more ramen. Feed, feed the children more ramen. That's what you were raised on, right, Bundy? Bundy? Hello? Never mind. Never mind. So, yes, keep your eyes out. Keep your eyes open. Let's find something to perhaps try to do together. Let's just make sure that it's perhaps a little bit better thought out than our previous experiences. I don't yes. I don't want another Arc Age. No, no more. No. Oh, yep. that was fun while it lasted. Yeah. It only lasted the entire three days of being in a queue to log into the game. I know, I'm exaggerating there, but you are exaggerating. But you know, Ferb would get up what at like seven and start his thing and get in the queue and he'd be in the game by like two in the afternoon. Which really stinks because I what little time I did play in the game, I did actually enjoy. But by the time it actually became reasonable to be able to log in at any time you want, basically everybody else in the community was gone. Nobody else in our good little group here played anymore. So I just was like, eh, screw it. Yeah, it was a brutal. I mean, the you go in there oh and you have my the, God. the spammers. The spammers was just unbelievable. Okay, Slade. Um, yeah. I'm looking at Camelot Unchained right now, and I'm looking at the three okay. factions, okay? Okay. The faction here, Tuatha de Danon, that was yes, a group in City of Heroes. That was a villain group. It's a, it's a Celtic community. That is really cool. I wonder, I wonder if any of the devs were uh, from uh, that uh, development team. Or, you know, I, it's, it's just... There, uh, there, there's a liked. list... If you go through on their about thing, they do have a list of the various projects that they've worked on because they were there for uh, Star Wars Galaxies, EverQuest, Dark Age of Camelot, and um, shoot. Let me see if I can find this. Mm. Yeah, I'd like to know. Just because it would be pretty cool. I mean, I absolutely loved City of Heroes. So anytime I see any kind of reference like that, it's great. I, actually, recently, I think was I think it was... You know, maybe it was Paragon? I don't remember. But there was a game that's coming out by NCSoft. And it was just a brief little cameo of Statesman. The uh, the flagship superhero uh, in City of Heroes. So to see that, it was just so awesome to see it again. Oh, I miss that game. And and, and, and this is NCSoft. The people who cancel it are they're using it to tease you? Yeah. Uh, well, they threw the actual statesman into the game. I guess you can play him as a character. Um, it was in a trailer. I don't remember what. It, let me let me go through NCSoft's development games right now and see. Yeah, I'm leery of getting involved with those guys again. Yeah, me too. I mostly because I'm just not happy that they canceled City of Heroes, my my favorite my favorite MMO. <laughs> but I'll get over it. I I still like Guild Wars too to an extent. It's hard for me to stay as stuck to it as the bombers, but yeah. I, I too go through the, that phase because I, I got in there and I spent probably what six weeks for five or six weeks doing the Guild Wars 2 quite frequently. Yeah, around that time. Because I remember I actually managed to go completely through the, uh, the, the, the daily um, the daily login rewards and actually made it to the very final day. I did that once, so. Okay. Well, 
we're approaching 41 minutes here. Is there anything else you guys want to discuss? Mm, I want to discuss the fact that it's still got another hour before dinner is going to be ready. What's for dinner? Uh, we got pinto beans, beans and sausage. And sausage. Well, well, beans, Mr. Tiger. Is this the beans and Sounds sausage? Sounds to me like you folks have had enough beans. Hmm? Is this the beans and sausage that uh, Herb is always raving about? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I really need to try these uh, beans and sausage. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, you know what? This this is nifty. I made fur put the stuff together this morning in the crock pot. He got to chop his first onion and cut up his first sausage. <laughs> you know, if those were my first, I'd be very, very surprised. Well, you know, you probably have chopped an onion, but I'm pretty sure you, A, didn't really enjoy it, and B, probably didn't do a very effective job. No, I absolutely hate onions. My eyes are so sensitive. Well, yes, you're, you're just one big snowflake. Poor sensitive verb. If you hurt my feelings, I'm going to... There's no one really to tell. I'm going to make very, very loud screeching noises. Oh. Uh, get outside, then. Speaking of loud screeching noises, um, have you guys watched The Tick? The new Amazon Prime series? No. You're asking us about television what? shows. What, what's yeah, this television uh, you speak that's of? That's right. What am I? Who am I with? Okay, I forgot about that. <laughs> there is no television. Well, that is that died decades ago. I have watched started watching it with my spousal unit, and we both absolutely love it. It's it's hilarious. It's it's superheroes on a very comical scale. I I remember seeing the animated stuff earlier. Yeah, I loved the animated series as a kid. But yeah, it's pretty good. I think you guys might actually enjoy it if you had Prime. You gotta have Prime. Yeah. Sadly, you gotta have Prime. And and and, and you gotta sit there and want to sit down and watch a television show. Yeah, Bundy, are you watching yeah. anything? Not much. I mean, I don't even have a TV. Oh wait a minute! Mm-hmm. You're are you soon moving up to the? Uh, Territories? Moving where? Uh, far, far north. Towards, yeah, towards way the north. north. Towards the Arctic. You're moving north. to the Northwest Territories? I am. Why? Work. And they offered to pay for my rent, utilities, and groceries. Okay, what are you... So what are you, a lumberjack? A grocery supervisor. A grocery... Oh my! <laughs> wow! You're flying all the way to the Northwest Territories, which is how far? How many miles away from where you currently live? A few thousand. And how many miles away from civilization is it? Uh, about five hundred kilometers from the provincial capital. So you're flying in from a you're sorry fl- you're, territory capital. You have to fly in because it's a fly-in only city or town, right? Except in the winter, because then there's ice roads. Okay, then the ice roads. But you're flying to... You're going to live in a fly-in only town to be a grocery supervisor, and I think that is an awesome thing to do. Yep. I'm going to sit there and sell frozen meals to the polar bears. <laughs> He's going to become a Better. polar bear. I'm going to sell ice to an Eskimo. Oh, God. Actually, technically, with the climate change stuff going on, they may be willing to buy some. Oh, no. Probably. I already saw the little thing. Someone was commenting on the changes of up there and the fact that they've noticed that the polar bears are actually, or is it the grizzly bears living up there? They're, they're eating more berries and vegetable matter than they're eating meat now. Yeah. Really? Now, I'm going to be far enough north that global warming isn't going to be, like, a factor for another, I don't know, at least a decade. Mm, I don't know. I also saw some things where they've actually begun to notice that, much like in Russia, the permafrost in Alaska is starting to thaw out and melt. 
Oh, uh, have you seen about these uh, methane? Yes, the explosion. Explosion things in Siberia. Oh, yeah. Methane explosion things in Siberia. The, the what? These the, pockets the, of the, uh, the, methane the, under the ground in Siberia the, are spontaneously exploding and leaving these massive craters. The Putin Putin. Putin Putin. Nice. Nice pun. So they're. That's crazy. Has anybody been affected by it? Well, I don't think anyone's been injured, but like, look up pictures of these things. It's nuts. Yeah. I'll oh yeah, to, they're they're deep. They're deep. I'll have to look up a picture of this and uh, put it in the podcast. That's uh, that's crazy. Yep. Are we done? Can we I guess, say goodbye? I guess we're done. I guess we can say goodbye to everybody. So uh, bye. Bye everybody. See you next time. Bundy, say bye. Bundy? Bundy, say something. Bye. Okay, there we go. Verb. Goodbye. See you later, everybody.